We're going to read the Bible now. Okay, um, Philippians, um, and from verse 20 to 26. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labour for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. Um, thanks very much, Kerry, uh, for reading the word. Uh, my name's Garnet. As I uh, was introduced before, one of the pastors here at Christ Central. It's great to have you here this morning and uh, look forward to you uh, having some morning tea with you later on. Um, in a second, I'll just pray, but just by way of sort of announcement y stuff. Um, now, next Sunday is Father's Day. Just reminding you, dads, on that one. This is the week to drop your hints if you haven't already, okay? So, next Sunday, Father's Day. Look, it's going to be a special morning. There'll be special morning tea for the dads. So, just let you know about that. Um, but also, next Sunday, um, something else, a bit of sort of church family news, and that it is the last Sunday that James and Chelsea and the kids will be with us. Uh, that's going to be a moment next Sunday. Um, so a few things with that, oh, we've been collecting you know, our um, Jensen farewell album um, uh, pages, you can return that today, but even today, if you just want to write a message, uh, we've got that going today as well. So head over to the Connect Desk and you'll see that um, as well. Um, and also next weekend, Saturday morning, uh, it's going to be a farewell BY, uh, BYO picnic at Pine Rivers Park. So hopefully you've heard that message as well. So 9.30 next Saturday morning, just a sort of church moment as we get around the Jensen's in their last weekend with us. So uh, just to remind you about that one. All right. Well, what a privilege that we have to get into God's Word now, this remarkable passage. Uh, have it open in front of you as we get into it together. Um, there'll be some uh, things on the screen as we go along. Uh, But please join me now in prayer. Let's do that. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Uh, We thank you that we can be together like this. We thank you that you're a God who is not mute and deaf. You're alive. Uh, You are active. Uh, You are powerful and sovereign and you speak. Um, You speak to us in your word. We thank you uh, for your word now. And may, um, uh, may our hearts now be open to your word, your goodness, your truth. Um, Thank you so much for Jesus. May we know him better today. And in his name we pray. Amen. Well, um, you know, as as you've heard this morning, we're going through the book of Philippians, the letter, New Testament letter of Philippians. And as is our habit, we sort of go section by section each week. But today, it's sort of like we're putting the brakes on a little bit to make sure that we notice and think about an utterly, utterly remarkable statement maybe it doesn't make sense to you yet but it's the line from the apostle paul where he says for to me uh, to live is christ and to die is gain this is about two possibilities Uh, will it be life or will it be death and paul says he's torn have a look verse 23 what shall i choose i do not know Uh, Not that it is his choice. You know, he's writing from a Roman prison, so if he's going to die, it's the uh, prison handler's choice, maybe the Roman emperor's choice. In fact, ultimately, it will be God's choice. But Paul is thinking about these possibilities, what he'd rather have. So it's a remarkable statement. To live is Christ, to die is gain. I'm torn between the two. What shall I choose? Um, I mean, when would we use that type of language? You know, if I go to Baskin and Robbins 
and I'm contemplating, you know, chocolate mousse royale or mango tango, you know, what shall I choose? I'm torn between the two. What should I choose? What would you choose? Well, I know what you'd choose. You'd choose both, would you? Why not? So for Paul, it's this joyous sort of indecisive way, not sort of weighing up ice cream options. He's weighing up life or death, one or the other. For Paul, they're both really good. Though he has a preference, as we'll see. But today is about how Christian faith uniquely remarkably helps us with life and death. So firstly, death. Uh, I think a certain philosopher, social commentator, has been very helpful on this lately. Uh, You might have heard her comments. Her name is Barbie. Come on. I know some of you have seen the movie. I I think it's brilliant. And in the movie, Barbie wakes up every day in Barbie land and she says, it is the best day forever, so was yesterday and so is tomorrow and every day from now until forever. So, But, you know, there she is in her nightly dance-off Barbie party. But then suddenly she has this existential crisis and she blurts out, have you ever thought of dying? Everyone's like, what's going on? And it's brilliant. Because it really just echoes our our own anxieties about death and there is that joke going around irrepressible thoughts of death and cellulite barbie now to make sense of that you're gonna have to see the movie but look i think we do have our occasional intrusive thoughts about death but until you are really close to death and i know some of you have been but for us our own death i think generally is incomprehensible unimaginable We don't really believe we're going to die. Now, various writers have made the point that every person and culture, not just Christians, but every person and culture um, has coping mechanisms to deal with death. We all create meaning and hope to keep going in the face of the unfaceable truth that is our death. Uh, There's this writer, Andrew Del Blanco, who's not a Christian, but he says... Hope is the way we overcome the lurking suspicion that all our getting and spending amounts to fidgeting while we wait for death. I mean, Barbie said the same thing, really. But, you know, hope is the way we overcome the lurking suspicion that all our getting and spending amounts to fidgeting while we wait for death. So how does the Apostle Paul understand death? What are the unique resources that Christianity brings to death? Well, firstly, death is gain. As Paul says, to live is Christ, to die is gain. How very remarkable. That doesn't mean Christians don't grieve in the face of death. And you can even see the way Paul talks about sorrow in Philippians 2, verses 26 to 27. Check it out sometime, Philippians 2. Verses 26 to 27. But how very remarkable. Uh, Christian, your last day is your best day. It's not your exit out of life. It's your entry into real life. Now, secular culture grabs for some type of hope in the face of death. You know, what is that hope? Hope. Well, what you hear is, well, in dying, it's the cycle of life. You know, you become energy. People talk like this. It's the Lion King hope. It's the circle of life. You know, our bodies decompose and we sort of, you know, become food that others might go on. It's, you know, it's this version of, you know, that it's natural. The circle of life we're supposed to think isn't that good. But I don't think that version of hope does much to really remove the horror that with your personality and hopes and dreams and loves that it just just ends that you are something but one day you will be nothing is that hope so christian hope is different 
Death is not a reducing of you. It's not an extinguishing of you. You don't go from a person to something impersonal, a person to just a drop in the ocean, something to nothing. Nothing. No, we're talking about real gain, real profit. You are better off, Christian, by dying. For Paul, to, to die is gain. Christian, your last day will be your best day day and you'll notice this uh, it's been said that Christians die well maybe you've personally seen this you know you go to a uniquely a specifically Christian uh, funeral and amidst the sadness and the tears there's real hope you see it don't you and you can also read about it in history too there are many you know last recorded words of Christians throughout his, history. He's a favourite. I love this one, old-fashioned turn of phrase. It's from Adorium Judson. He's a missionary to Burma, died 61 from lung disease. And he said, I go with the gladness of a boy bounding away from school. I feel so strong in Christ. Sorry to be so down on school here, people. Love that phrase, though. I'm sure the teachers feel exactly the same way at the end of the day as well. Come on. But Christians die well. To live is Christ, to die is gain. But we can still ask, well, why is death gain for the person who's a Christian? Well, here's something else. For the Christian, death is a departing. Have a look there in verse 23. Speaking of death, Paul says, I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. Now, the original word for depart comes from the language of loosening a rope. So this week I discovered the original word goes, uh, go, you know, it was used in a couple of ways, like a boat moored at a dock, and that you would loose that rope so that you'd depart and sail home. Or the other way it was used was like basically in camping with tents. You know, at the end of the day, the soldier would pack up the tent and unloosen the ropes to depart and march home. And I know that every sort of camping family here, here, uh, family here knows that feeling. You know, at the end of the camping trip, you're packing up your gear, you're loosening the ropes, and your feelings, you know, your thoughts and feelings are going towards home. So the good thing about death, it is to depart. Now, it doesn't mean Christians romanticize death. Death is horrible. You know, Christians know that there's nothing natural about death. It's a deeply unnatural part of life, a horrible thing that brings grief. Death pulls people apart. There's lots of grief, grief for us to go through in life. Still to come. But the Christian hope is that the final loosening of our lives to, you know, this life with our earthly bodies, and it is a coming home. You know, I reckon those Qantas ads have nailed certain feelings of nostalgia, uh, feelings for Australia and home. I don't know if you've seen the last one. Calls, it's called, call, uh, it's called um, Feels Like Home Again. I don't know if you've seen the ad, but it's, uh, it's a, a son who's working overseas. It looks like Japan or something like that, very urban and built up. Uh, but uh, uh, him and his brothers decide for a surprise, uh, pr surprise party for their mum who's turning 60. So then he's on the plane, uh, and then the scene is in a very Australian backyard. There's bush and all of that, and he um, you know, taps her on the shoulder, and she turns around. And she can't believe it's her son, and they hug and embrace, and they cry. Um, it does pull on your heartstrings, but this is the Christian hope in death. A departing from and, and a going to. But it's important we realize for Paul, it's not a desperation to get out of a situation. As if it's he's in prison, life sucks, he's had enough, death is just the easiest exit out of here. no. I think he'd say the same thing in prison or out of prison. It's not what he's leaving. It's much more about where he's going. I desire 
uh, a desire to depart and be with Christ. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give a quote now of, uh, well, I gave it actually just, I don't know, a month or two ago now. But it's from Christian author pastor, uh, Timothy Keller, who died from pancreatic cancer not long ago. And uh, his son recorded some of his final words, his dad's final words, and Timothy Keller said, just have a listen in. I'm thankful for all the people who've prayed for me over the years. I'm thankful for my family that loves me. I'm thankful for the time God has given me, but I'm ready to see Jesus. I can't wait to see Jesus. Send me home. Send me home. Uh, Christians understand that death is not some impersonal absorption into the universe. It's a leaving and it's a coming to. And here's this last thing about death before we get to life. And it's there in the words of Adorium Judson and Timothy Keller and every Christian, death is about Christ. We start seeing this already, but you know, Paul has said to live is Christ, but to die is gain. And you pick up for Paul, uh, if it was just up to him, if it was just up to Paul, he knows his preference. At verse 23, I'm torn between the two. Then, he, then comes his preference, I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. See, for Paul, it's all about, well, how do I get the most, how do I get the most of Jesus? You know, in life, I proclaim Jesus. I serve Jesus, or in death, I be with Jesus. So he chooses, I'd rather be with Jesus, better by far. So I, I put it to you, uh, what makes for real hope for the Christian is not simply, and this is, Timothy Keller says, this is not simply life after death, it's love after death. It's not life after death, it's love after death. Yeah, and you spend time with a dying person, and I know a good number of you have, but you, know, you can be a Christian, someone who's not a Christian, but they are in bed, and what comes precious to them in their last days is not their house, is not their caravan, is not the marks they got for university, um, it's not their sporting achievements, you know, as they lie in bed, if they have any regrets, it's not, I wish I'd spent more time in the office. If they have any regrets, it's about family. You know, I wish I could have been a better husband, better father. See, what's important at the time of death is friends and family. Uh, maybe around the bed is photos of family. In the last days, it's about the touch of family. It's about comforting words from family. In the face of death, we know what's important, don't we? Love. And that's the Christian hope. To live is Christ, to die is gain. I desire and depart and to depart be with Christ, who loves me. It's an undying love. It's love proven. When Jesus died on a cross, it's, it's a deep love that Jesus, the Son of God, died for sinners like us. To be a Christian is to be in a love relationship. So death does not extinguish love. Death opens up the door wider to experience love. Not just life after death, but love after death. Death is gain. Death is departing. Death is to be with Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who loves us. You know, there is something in our current secular culture. You know, if you go to a funeral and uh, as you walk into the chapel or the church building, um, you know, you're given uh, an order of service, a booklet, and on the cover is the photo of the person, um, the deceased person, and just say, you know, people don't have much faith. But um, underneath the photo of that person, you're never going to see the words, now food for worms. You're not going to see it. Because we know that just isn't enough. So even without religion, people still want something meaningful. So Uncle Jack, he's looking down on us. And Auntie Jill, 
you know, there she is, she's waiting for us. We know becoming fertilizer doesn't satisfy. We need something more. Well, here's the more. Christ. All that Jesus has done for us. And our death graduates us to be with him. So that's the death. Now life. Because Paul says, to live is Christ. And I don't think we know how, but Paul's pretty certain that for now, you know, his personal preference, death, won't be given. He's got more living to do. Have a look at verse 25 where he says, Convinced of this, I know that I'll remain and I'll continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. But, how, but see how Paul defines life? Christ. And how, Paul, and how does Paul speak of death? To be with Christ. See, though he's got a personal preference going on, uh, something is, though, to be gained either way. It is, in the end, actually win-win. He's not crying into his cornflakes that God is giving him life. For Paul, life actually is not the booby prize because no matter what, for the Apostle Paul, it's all about Jesus Christ. So we have to understand it's about, it's, it's been uh, coming through in the letters as we've seen in the last few weeks, but uh, there's this controlling, compelling, life-shaping reality that directs all of Paul's priorities and hopes and desires. It is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And what a challenge for every one of us. Do we, um, do we sort of have this, this consistent, thorough, thoroughgoing thing that actually shapes all of our life too? Christ? You know, I mentioned the, the Qantas ad. I'll tell you about another ad now. I'm, gee, I mean, I'm just giving you know, a plug to all the corporations this morning. But it goes to show businesses know how to actually speak to our hearts. And uh, this one is a Telstra ad. I don't know if you've seen it, but it comes with the words, we all have a why. Uh, the first scene is a mother with her newborn. And words come up, he is why. And the next scene goes to sort of wind turbines, and it's about, you know, renewable energy, saving the planet. It says, this is why. And it's a scene of a, of a young man, and there's a couple, and it says, kindness is why. Love is why. Um, Telstra, you know, trying to sell us some, you know, some phone plans, knows how hearts work. We all have a why. We all have a compelling, controlling, life-shaping why. Well, I ask this to you and I ask this of me. Is your why Christ? As you think about the week to come, as you think about the rest of the day, is your compelling, controlling motivation Christ? For every Christian. I think this is very challenging. But then how does Paul unpack what it looks like to live is Christ? Well, it's all there in verses 24 uh, to 26. Uh, read this with me in your Bible, and I'll give the emphasis just so we can notice it. But have a look there for what to live is Christ actually looks like to live out. Verse 24, But it's more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I'll, that I'll remain and I'll continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you, again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. Now, to live is Christ, for Paul is to live that others may know Christ and grow in Christ and mature in Christ, that others may make progress in Christ and have joy in faith. So he uh, takes life over death. Not to save his neck, not in a begrudging way, but Christ shapes him, um, sacrificing himself, seeking the benefit of others. It is remarkable, isn't it, how Paul, the Apostle Paul, weighs up and assesses what he'll do. Think about how we decide, you know, what we want to do in life. You know, both my kids have reminded me that when they were little, they each had the same type of experience when they're invited to two different parties 
on the same day. And in these moments, it was very clear which was the better party. Um, And so, you know, there was a choice. But as parents, we directed them, um, maybe told them, um, you know, what they had to do. You know, it was about either, you know, stick with the first party acceptance, you know, keep your promises, um, can't just, you know, take the better offer, or, you know, even with a certain party, you know, where it seemed to us that the kid needed to have some more friends, you know, so my kids can remember having to go to some kiddie party rather than laser zone. It's a classic parent move, isn't it? Trying to see your kids develop and be focused on others. But I think we all, parent, uh, you know, tr- adults as well, we're constantly needing to learn this one. That we make choices. You know, that's what's necessary for others. What benefits others for their progress and joy in the faith. I've got to say, Christ Central, I am so very thankful for your partnership in the gospel. And that's a very Philippians phrase, as we've seen. Um, God is working in you and growing you, and I'm so thankful for you. You know, take the opportunities that keep coming up to serve and encourage others, where there's a chance to, you know, be in the Word with someone. Well, there's a chance to be involved in a team here. So the good news of Jesus goes out. Well, that's an opportunity worth taking, isn't it? Uh, To live is Christ, to die is gain. It's been a big weekend here in Christ Central, in fact. Had the amazing youth team do their thing on Friday night. Because of the carnival, we had to shift everything from here to happen up at Petrie. A uh, whole bunch of people hanging out with te- uh, te- and teenagers to share the gospel of Jesus. We had a whole bunch of people at the carnival yesterday helping in all sorts of ways. A uh, bunch of things has happened around the hall even today because of the carnival to get ready for church. We've got kids ministry. We've got a whole bunch of people involved in welcoming and making community happen so that we might make progress and joy in the faith. And actually, wasn't that video before great with Nancy this morning? And I've got to say, we have others in our church who are also new to Christian faith. That is because others have spent time with them for their progress and joy in the faith. To live is Christ means to live that Christ may be at work in others. Uh, This word from Paul, to live is Christ and to die is gain, means that Christian faith shifts the way we view Everything, everything takes on new value because of Christ. You know, Kirsty and I once met a woman who was uh, into birds, really into birds, and she sketched birds. She had a journal after journal after journal of every drawing of a bird. She never left home without her journal. Everywhere she went was an opportunity to draw a bird. And I just think about, you know, what would it be like to go for a walk with her somewhere? I reckon her neck would be on a swivel. You know, looking at the sky, every tree, every fence post. You know, every's an opportunity to see a bird and draw a bird. Um, she was bird obsessed. Um, You know, she was so into it. And I reckon, you know, you could say her why was birds. My point is, when you're into something, when you're passionate about something, well, new opportunities emerge. With your passion, you start to see things differently. So the Apostle Paul is showing us for Christians, our why is Christ. Now, Christ shapes how we see the world. We see things in a new light. Even death. Death becomes something different. It is gain. We get to depart and be with Christ who loves us so much. That is a remarkable and certain hope. If you're not a Christian yet, I invite you to keep checking out Jesus who offers this hope. And life for the Christian, every day for the Christian, the reason for life is Christ, 
who loves us so very much. The opportunities are all around us to serve Christ and help others to know Christ and to grow in Christ. It is a new way to live. It's a new way to see the world. And this is what happens when we know Christ. I'm going to invite you to pray with me that indeed that we might keep knowing Christ and live it out. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you so much for our Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour, our King and Friend. What a remarkable word that you've given us. To live is Christ and to die is gain. And Father, in knowing Christ, indeed may we see all of reality in this way. You know our anxieties and fears when it comes to death, but help us to know Christ more so indeed that we would even begin to see death in this new and truer way, that there is gain, such gain to be had when we die in Christ. And Father, thank you that we can see life um, the way it, way it should be lived um, under the Lordship of Jesus that we might live, that we, we might live with Christ and for Christ. Help us to take the opportunities around us to be about him and to be about others making progress and having joy in the faith. Um, help us to keep pressing into those opportunities. And may we have um, such joy in all of this because of Christ. And in his name we pray. Amen.